What is going on at Cardiff? It's a club in decline. Since their relegation from the Premier League, they got 5th and 8th positions. And then it's a case of 18th, 21st, 12th. And now they're sitting at the bottom of the championship with one goal scored and no points. It's looking pretty bleak. And they just sacked Errol Balot. He's a manager that came in. He replaced Sabri Lamucci after Lamucci wasn't offered a new deal by Vincent Tan. And now a quick word on Vincent Tan. If Dai Young wasn't in the Football League, people would be talking about Vincent Tan as the worst owner in the Football League. What he's done at that club is just shocking. The management from the top appalling. But enough about Vincent Tan. Let's talk about Errol Balot. When he joined the club, they just avoided relegation. Sabri Lamucci had done a great job in steering them clear after, you know, Mark Hudson. It just wasn't working for him. He obviously wasn't good enough. But again, going back to Vincent Tan, there just hasn't been enough investment at Cardiff. Errol Balot took over. There had been a soft embargo over the summer. And you know what? He set about doing a good Good job. He got them to 12th position. It wasn't vintage football though, was it? They scored 53 goals in total. Not a great haul, is it? So 20 of those came from open play. 23 were set pieces. And what really goes to show how this football was, it was quite attritional, but it was effective. They were hard to beat. Their top goal scorers were Carlin Grant, a striker, and Perry NG, their defender both with six goals apiece. It sort of shows what type of football that they were going with. But you know what? 12th place finish. Cardiff fans were pretty optimistic ahead of this season, weren't they? I predicted them 20th in our championship prediction video. My co-host Mark was a lot more optimistic, predicting that Cardiff would finish just outside the playoffs. I did think looking at the trend of how Cardiff have been going that that 12th place finish was just a bit of an anomaly wasn't it I figured Cardiff wouldn't do too well this year but I didn't think it would be this bad I really didn't I thought there would be worse teams in the league and I also thought Errol Balot would sort of retain that solid hard to beat ethic they had from last season but the wheels have definitely come off and we say bye-bye to Errol Balot. And fans, they're sort of, they understand it and they're not sad to see him go. Obviously because it's been such a poor start to the season. But I think a lot of their thoughts and miseries were sort of compounded in that game against Leeds. Where it was a game that lasted 102 minutes and Cardiff only completed 103 passes. Cardiff were under the cosh pretty much for the entirety of that game. In the 14th minute, there was standing applause for Sol Bamba, who passed away way too young. Cardiff City legend. He was their captain. He played for them in the Premier League. And you know what? Every single person stood up and applauded for Sol Bamba. Cardiff fans, however, are very disappointed in Errol Balot and his staff because the only people who didn't applaud or stand up in the entire stadium was the Cardiff City bench. The Leeds bench stood up and they applauded their former player. Where's the respect? Where's the respect for Sol Bamba? So that was pretty much the, the last nail in the coffin for Errol Balot. That and losing 2-0 and really being absolutely appalling. If Leeds had been more clinical, they could have scored 5, 6, 7. It could have been an absolute rout that game. But from last season, Errol Balot was actually quite popular at Cardiff. He won three out of the four derbies that he was in against Swansea. And that always gives a big thumbs up from the Bluebird fans. But going back to what I was saying about the football being quite attritional, the last league game where they actually won by more than one league goal was the 28th of October 2023. 16 out of the last 17 defeats that Cardiff have tasted have been by more than one goal and it would have actually been 17 out of 17 defeats by more than one goal but that Ebu Adams miss from Derby that was appalling but at the same time it kept the score to 1-0 so it's not a clean sweep. 
as it were. Cardiff have conceded the first goal in 15 out of their last 16 league games. It's really not sustainable. Cardiff fans are also a bit upset about the, the way that Errol Balot kept the faith with the older players in the squads. The only youth player that really got a fair shape, Ruben Colwell, and he's a right talent. A lot of eyes will be on him, especially if Cardiff were to go down. But interestingly, Errol Balot always happened to dig out Ruben Colwell every week after a game, saying he's not tracking back, he's not pitching in. Obviously, Errol Balot had a way that he wanted to play. You don't dig out the youth. Experienced players can take being dug out. When you have a player who's been that crucial for Cardiff, and has such a big future in the game, don't dig them out. And that really didn't sit well with Cardiff City fans either. So what's next for Cardiff? Are they going to keep this downward trajectory? Well, a couple of names that have been linked earlier. I guess it's always a case of, will Nathan Jones finally come to Cardiff? And you know what, Vincent Tan, he's chaotic. He's a chaotic owner. But Nathan Jones has been known to jump ship to chaos clubs before. When at Luton and it was all going so well, he joins Stoke and the Coates family. Obviously didn't work out for him there, but he returned to Luton Town and then he joined Southampton. And I'm not saying Southampton were too chaotic. They had good ownership. They sold to other owners who had different ideas from the previous owners. But again, it was going quite well at Luton. He'd rebuilt his legacy at Luton, and then he jumped ship again. Now, Nathan Jones is at Charlton. The question is, will he leave Charlton to go to his boyhood team of Cardiff? It's a tough one considering Nathan Jones has pretty much got the boys back together, hasn't he? He's got Danny Hilton, Dan Potts, Luke Berry. He's got a little Luton Town reunion going on at Charlton. So, for now, I, d I don't think Nathan Jones will jump ship. Not right now. It it's going quite well at Charlton. And to be honest, you don't want to get that sort of reputation for being a ship jumper, do you? He's already done it a couple of times. Other managers that have been linked. Steven Schumacher, he's a good manager. I think he was unfairly fired by Stoke City. Does he want to go to a team that is that chaotic though? Who knows? I guess more names will come out, but there's also been Darren Purse, the under-21 manager, who could potentially come up and um, manage the team for a bit, but I don't think an interim basis really works. And then there's Aaron Ramsey, his boyhood club. Could he become a player manager? Potentially. I don't know if he's got his coaching badges, but right now they just need that experience don't they like on the pitch off the pitch they really need someone to pick them up turn them around put them in the right direction because right now cardiff city need points on the board if you just map out that trajectory it looks like they could be in league one quite soon it's alarming it's not as quick a fall from grace as a sunderland it's slow sustained and it shows that the rot is very much setting in cardiff fans where do you point the fingers you got to point them at Vincent Tan, the owner. Cardiff City fans, who do you want to take over at Cardiff? Do you think you can beat the drop? Do you think you can turn it around and maybe even finish mid-table like you did last season? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video and you want even more championship content, give this video a like. Subscribe to our channel. As always, I hope you all have a great day week.